Charles. Because New Sardis is where it all started. All right. Some 50 some years ago. And uh, actually longer than that. Congratulations to Pastor Tatum and his wife for 50 years. Amen. And, and next month in July, we'll be 49 years. Amen. My wife is a product of this church too. Yeah. Plus they like the choir. <laughs> a lot of faces that I see here that I know and remember and I'm not going to get into calling names because I don't want to mess nothing up but I know a lot of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 And some of you were here when Reverend Bax was here. Amen. 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 Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come right now to preach your word. Father, we ask right now that you will bless your word is only yes. you can, Father. Yes. Yes. Father, we know that you sit high and you look low, Father. Yes. And we know that you care about each and every one of us. Yes. Father, we ask right now that you will let the Holy Spirit have his way. Yes. Father, these things we ask in your Son, Jesus' name, and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Yes. You know, I, I, when I was told I was coming over here, I was given your theme, which was a man devoted to his brother. A man is devoted to his brother and brother up. And the scripture, Psalm 133. Mm -hmm. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. Uh, I'm going to read the entire song, if you don't mind. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life, forevermore. And I said because it's very important that uh, when we exegesis a scripture, if you don't mind, or a chapter, we need to get the whole context. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah. I, I teach at Mary Natural Bible Institute, and most of the things I teach is hermeneutics and homiletics. All right. All right. <coughs> there are there's going to be some things that are going to be not be homiletically correct. But I guarantee you, it'll be in line with the Word of God. All right. Amen. But Amen. before before I get to there, we need to understand who we're talking about. So if you would, turn to Matthew chapter 12. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. And if you would, look at the 46th verse. And I'm going to read it. Just for context. Amen? Amen. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother, his brethren, stood without desiring to speak to him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who is my brother? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brother, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Amen. And it's real important to understand that because we sometimes put more stock and more emphasis in who was birthed in the same household or yeah. who my cousin is or yeah. my uncle or my aunt. But Jesus said, 
they're not doing the will of my Father, they ain't nothing to me. So, so we're looking at your title, and it says a man is devoted to his brother. I would say a brother is devoted to his brother. You know, you know, you know, you people preach man up all the time. But your theme is, is brother up. Yeah. That changes yeah. things. All right. Amen? Yeah. Have you ever gone on a road trip with your family? Well, road trips can be really good or they can be really bad. All right. But now imagine this. Imagine just for a minute your family included your aunts and your uncles and your cousins and your neighbors, everybody. Anyone, anybody want to sign up for that road trip? Well, that's similar to what was happening at the annual feast in Jerusalem. The people would travel to Jerusalem for the feast with their neighbors, family, and relatives. And as they drew closer to Jerusalem, more and more people would come together. People from different regions and different tribes, but all coming together for one common purpose. Yeah, well. To worship the Lord Jesus in Jerusalem. Yeah. And as we shall see, that's what makes the difference. Amen. You come to this church for any other reason, yeah. other than to serve the Lord, yeah. you're here for the wrong reason. All right. yeah. Amen. All right now. There are few things All right now. as precious in this world as believers living together in unity. Yeah. And one of the marks of a great church is the sweet sense of fellowship yeah. and unity we experience in the body of Christ. All right. All right. All right. Psalm 133 says, it tell, Psalm 133 tells us three things about living together in unity. All right. First, it tells us the goodness of living together in unity. Uh -huh. Second, it tells us the source of living together in unity. And third, it tells us the blessing of living together in All right. unity. All right. Now let's take a look. The goodness of living together in unity. First, it tells us the goodness of living together in unity is how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. And it is appropriate for us as Christians because we are brothers and sisters together yeah. in Christ. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Not all Bible translations have this, uh, but in the Hebrew, there is an actual behold at the beginning of the verse. The goodness of living together in unity is so good that the psalmist says, behold, look, marvel at what I'm about to tell you. Living together in unity is both good and pleasant. First, living together in unity, good and pleasant. The word translated good in the verse is a word that means excellent, agreeable, or beneficial. In other words, this is something that is good in God's sight. He has put his stamp of approval on it. The word translated pleasant is a word that means beautiful, sweet, or lovely. In other words, it's not only good in God's sight, but it's good for you too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a family, a business, a church, or a sports team, life is much more pleasant and enjoyable when everybody on the team is getting along. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I like the fact that living together in unity is both good and pleasant. Because there are some things that are either one way or the other, not both. Here's an example. The Bible tells us that discipline is good, but not pleasant. 
Hebrews 12, 11. It says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. All right. So discipline can train you. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are other things that are pleasant, but not good. Like eating too much money. Yeah. It's going to be pleasant eating it. But all down the road, you're going to have a problem. It's not going to be so good. So we have to take into consideration what the scripture is telling us. It's both good for you and it's good to you. Yeah. And because it's good, that tells us it's a gift from God. All right. How do I know? Because James 1.17 says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father. The book of Acts describes the early church and its remarkable unity. We read in Acts 2, it says they devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayer. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Amen. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. What a beautiful picture of unity. So that's the first thing we learn about the goodness of living together in unity. It is both good and pleasant. We are brothers and sisters together in Christ. So therefore, if we are brothers and sisters in Christ, we should be getting along. Amen. And, and then watch this. We should not be allowing a neophyte or an unsaved person to get into our mix and dictate to us. Uh -oh. yeah. uh -oh. I'm a brother on, and I'm talking to my brother yeah. and, and, and you unsafe folks, wherever y'all are down here, yeah. you ain't got no business getting in our midst because right. right. I'm talking to my brother. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In other words, brother up. Brother up. Secondly, it's appropriate for us as Christians because we are brothers and sisters. Notice the special emphasis of the unity described here in 133. About behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. As Christians, we are brothers and sisters. We have been adopted into God's family. Yes, sir. We yes, share sir. God yes, as our Father. Right. That makes us family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. No Christian. That's good, sir. Is an only child. Right. All right. Okay. All right. No All Christian right. is an only child. That's good, sir. All right. As a Christian. You don't, you don't get to choose whether or not you're going to be part of God's family. Oh, right. You already are. See, 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 one thing about us as brothers, sometimes we have a, a, a problem telling the truth to our brother. Oh, sir. And it shouldn't be. But you know what I call that? I call that suffering from liabilities. All right. So you have this disease that you ain't figured out how to get rid of. But sometimes you gotta take a little laboratory. You know, y'all y'all know it as laboratory, but it's really laboratory. You gotta take care of your diabetes. Stop talking lies to your sisters and your brothers. All right. Talk every man the truth. Amen? As a Christian, you don't get to choose whether or not you're part of the family. So the only question remaining is how you will live as part of the family of God. Will you live in unity or will you live in division? Lord, have mercy. Preach the word. 
Now this might come as a surprise to you, but brothers and sisters don't always get along. We find many examples of that in the Bible. Cain killed his brother Abel. Joseph's brother sold him into slavery. Even Jesus' disciples got into arguments with each other. And as Christians in the church, we don't always get along either. There's an old poem that goes like this. To live above with the saints we love, oh, that will be such glory. To live below with the saints we know, well, well that's a different story. <laughs> that's a different story. So brothers and sisters don't always get along. We disagree sometimes. Sometimes we get angry with each other. But Ephesians 4.26 says, to be angry and sin not. Yeah, that's right. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Mm -hmm. Neither give place to the devil. So what is that saying in Ephesians? It's saying, if he tells you, be angry and sin not, the Bible's telling me that it's okay to be angry. That's right. It's really called righteous indignation. But don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Meaning, if you're angry with your sister or your brother, get it right. Because if you don't get it right, the devil is going to creep into your mix. And when he get in your mix, all bets are off. Because he'll make you do some things that you, know, you, you never thought you would do. You, you know, I, I've, had, I've had an opportunity to, to, to go into the county jail and, and, and talk to some people who have done some heinous things. And one of the questions that I never fail to ask is, why did you do that, Pastor? The answer is always the same. I don't know. And guess what? Most of them telling the truth. They don't know, but when Satan get in your midst, he'll make you do some stuff you never would have figured out you would have did. They ain't lying. They don't know why they did that. All they know is they did it. I, I blacked out. True. The devil will black you out. That's right. People sit in the church and go to sleep. So watch out. watch out. We need to work together <laughs> to overcome disagreements. Amen. And always, always love each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Hebrews 13.1 says, it tells us as believers, keep on loving each other as brothers. The next part of the psalm tells us the source of living together in unity. Where in the world does this beautiful, good, pleasant, brotherly, sisterly unity come from? Our psalm answers that question by giving us two images. Living together in unity is like oil poured on Aaron's head. The living together in unity is like the dew of Hermon falling on Mount Zion. Notice there is a downward movement in both of these images. Uh -huh. In both of these images, the blessings come from above, then pouring down on us. It starts high, and then it moves downward. And so the psalm is telling us that God is the source of living together in unity. Oh, let's take a little closer look. First of all, living together is like oil on Aaron's head. Look at verse 2. It's like the precious oil poured on the head that ran down upon the beard. Running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the skirt of his garment. Now, this is one of those biblical images that grows and expands in meaning with every phrase and every word. Start with the oil. Oil is a valued commodity in ancient Israel. 
not for making gasoline or fuel like today, but is used for cooking and also moisturizing and refreshing. So to compare unity to oil is a good thing. So the unity that comes from God is not like is not just like oil, it's like precious oil. Uh, the word translated precious here is the exact same word that translated good back in verse 1. This is not any old oil. This is precious oil. It is excellent, agreeable, and beneficial. It is good in God's sight, and he has put the stamp of approval on it. It's like the precious oil poured on the head. It's a picture of hospitality and refreshment. When you invite someone into your home today, you offer them a nice, refreshing drink, right? Amen. A Kool-Aid. Right. <laughs> well, in ancient Israel, you might offer them something to drink, but you would also offer them some oil for their head. The climate, it was hot and dusty and oil on the head would be a welcome relief. We find a similar image of hospitality and refreshing in Psalms 23, 5. It says, you anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. But this is not just a precious oil poured on the head. It is also running down on the beard. In other words, this is not just a little bit of oil, but this is oil poured out so richly, so fully, that it even runs down to the person's beard. That horse is generous and not stingy. This phrase, running down, appears twice in verse 2. And then it appears a third time in verse 3 where it translates as fallen. In other words, God's blessings flow down to us from heaven. All right. Every good and perfect gift is yeah. from above. Yeah. Coming down from the Father, yeah. living together in unity is a gift to be received from God. Yeah. You cannot do it on your own. All right. All right. I don't care how good you think you are. You can't do it on your own. There are some things that go on in our lives, and each and every one of us have things going on in our lives. And if God is not in the center of those things, those things can and sometimes will drive you crazy. <laughs> but wait, there's more. The image shifts again. And now we suddenly learn that this is Aaron's head and Aaron's beard. Yes. And that's important because Aaron was the high priest. Yes. And God required that a very special oil was used for anointing yes. the high priest. Yes. You can even look the recipe up in Exodus 30. It was specific formula with specific ingredients yes. and, 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 and measures, and it was only to be used for anointing the priest and for the sacred objects in the temple. Amen. The fact that it's a special sacred oil that is poured teaches us that there is a special fellowship among Christians, mm -hmm. unlike anything we experience outside the church. Christian fellowship is unique. It's sacred because it is fellowship united around Christ. That's another reason Aaron is pictured here. Aaron was the high priest and the anointed high priest with oil connects this psalm with the previous psalm. Over in Psalm 132, focused on God's promise of the Messiah, which means the anointed one. And so Aaron, the anointed high priest, points forward to Jesus, who is our great high priest. Amen. And who is also the promise. Messiah. Amen. Right. Amen. The fact that the oil is poured on Aaron's head points toward Christ. Yeah. The New Testament tells us in Ephesians 5 that Christ is the head of the church yes, and is. that we are members of his body. Yes. Christ is the head and therefore our unity is founded in him. Uh -huh. We are united with Christ and therefore we are united with each other. Yes, Brother up. You know, speaking of brother, let, this this is not in my message. Turn to this. You know, turn, turn to Genesis 13. Turn to Genesis 13. 
Genesis 13. I don't know why the Lord sent me over there. But watch this. Watch this. Genesis 13. I'm gonna start at I'm gonna start at the fourth verse. Genesis 13, that's the first book of the Bible, you know. Uh, starting at the fourth <laughs> verse. And it says, Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, and flocks, and herds, and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we are brethren. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Abram is Lot's uncle. Amen. Abram could have pulled rank on Lot mm -hmm. and said, look, boy, I'm, I'm your uncle. You, you, you do what I tell you to do. You do what I tell you to do. But he didn't do that. Watch what he did. He said, is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. For if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Amen. He gave his nephew the choice. Well, here's why he gave him the choice. Because he just told him in verse 8, let's not have no strife between me and you, because we are brethren. Now watch this. He said, but them knucklehead herdsmen who is from all over the country, believing in all kind of other religions and other gods, they got a problem. See, just because they, they got a problem, Lot, don't mean we got to have a problem. Because we are brothers. He didn't say nothing about us being relatives. He said we are brothers. Now, they are related because remember what we saw over in, in, in Matthew 12, they who do the will of my father, the same are the sisters and brothers. Well, here we are brethren. Forget about the relationship. Think about the Christly relationship. That's the only blood that counts. Are you linked with Christ? That's what counts. Listen, if you're not linked in the blood of Jesus, anything allowed to go with you. Amen. And again, you'll get in two brothers mixed. See, now watch this. When that happened, and I don't want to stay over here, they, they made the decision, didn't they? The herdsman was having an argument, but they didn't refer to the, to the herdsman care. They said, look, like you, wherever you want to go, you go, and take your dudes with you. And I'm going to go where you leave. I'm going to take my dudes with you. You don't give a neophyte a choice in nothing, no brother and matter. Because he don't know what he's talking about. Make your decisions. So the robe that Aaron have on is, is, is talking about the people of God. The good blessing of Christian unity flows from the head to the beard to the robe. It's an image of the whole body of Christ united together. Uh, on Aaron's robe, he had all 12 tribes of, 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 of Israel on his robe. We are included because we were grafted in. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oil is the Bible, in the Bible is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And what do we learn from the New Testament? That God poured out his spirit on Jesus on Jesus the head and Jesus poured out the spirit on his body, the church. Amen. We are all linked. 
And so, living together in unity is like running down on Aaron's beard. It's also like the dew of Hermon falling on Mount Zion. Now, finally, it, was, it is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. Mount Hermon is located in the northern part, in, in the northern part of Israel, extending also along the border of Lebanon and Syria. It's the highest mountain in Israel, with an altitude over 9,000 feet above sea level. It's known for its cool nights and heavy dew. In the winter, it's covered with snow, and the area surrounding Hermon stays lush and green all from alone. All right. Now, compare that with Mount Zion. Mount Zion is located in the southern part of Israel. It is a much smaller mountain with an altitude of only 2,400 feet above sea level. Unlike Hermon, there's a very little dew or rain or any moisture at all in Jerusalem during the summer months. And so, we have two very different mountains here. Hermon to the north, Zion to the south. Right. Hermon towering over the other mountain, yeah. and Zion just part of the rain. Yes, sir. Mount Hermon cool and refreshing. Mount yeah. Zion hot and dry. Yeah. What an amazing thing it would be if the dew of Mount Hermon were to fall yeah. on Mount Zion, yeah. and that is exactly what happens with Christian fellowship. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The yeah. word yeah. Tr uh, translated fallen here is the same word we saw for running down in verse 2. Once again, God's blessing of unity comes down to us from above. Yeah. It's something we receive from the Lord. Apart from God's blessing, we are like the dry, arid land yeah. of Mount Zion. But God sends his blessing on, upon us like the dew of Mount Hermon. Yeah. The dew here is probably another symbol for the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit is essential to our unity for Christ. Yeah. Ephesians 4 tells us, be completely humble and gentle. Right. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Right. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Yeah. The fact that Hermon and Zion are united by the dew in this image reminds us that in the church, we are all one. All right. yeah. It is a unity of the great and small, a unity of the high and low, a unity of the north and south brought together. It's a unity that crosses all human boundaries and divisions. Do is refreshing, and Christian fellowship should also be refreshing. We should leave church energized, encouraged, and renewed, charged up, revved up, and ready to go to work. What do these two images teach us about living together in unity? It starts high, and it comes down low to us. Listen, the Lord is where it all begins. If you're not entrenched with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're not listening to him as he speaks, then you are on your own out here. And nobody in here needs to be on their own. Because we know how tough it is out here. Listen, it's tough for those of us who know the Lord and try to do what's right. But it's one thing not to know him, and then it's another thing to know him and continue to do what you know is wrong. I know we don't, we don't have nobody like that in here. I'm talking about that. My, <laughs> that that's what they do. Only as we focus on Christ, the head of the body, and only as we yield to the Holy Spirit within us can we know the sweet goodness of living together in unity. But even though Christian unity is a gift from God, we still need to live it out in our lives. Right. There's work for each and every one of us to do. Amen. Because, see, oh, 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 over 2,000 years ago, 
when, when, when Christ went to the cross, uh-huh. Christ had me on his mind. Right. He had me on his mind understanding that he get ready to die. And all he could think about was me and brother and other. Because it was for him going to the cross and getting nailed to the cross and dying and being buried and getting up up. for me. Uh Little old me. Uh Little old me. He got up Uh because he had me on his mind. Now, while he was Getting up. And right now, let me just don't not confuse anybody. He's up and he's sitting on the right hand of the All Father, right making interceptions right. for little old me. Yeah. So since he did that for me, uh-huh. all who accepted Christ in the part of their sins, he did it for you too. Amen. So you share the blessing of me. All right. Because that's what he died for. I I I, I taste the thing personally. See, I'm not going to stand here and put nobody in heaven. Because I can't. I can't stand here and put nobody in heaven. Because I can't. All I can tell you is that I'm saved and I know where I'm going. All I can offer you is the same salvation so you know where you're going. And that salvation is is a person. And the person's name is Jesus Christ. It's not a thing. It's not a it. It's a person. And if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, there's another place called hell where people will go. You don't hear too much talk about hell anymore because people like to smooth that over. You know, you know, hell, that's just a figment of your imagination. You in, you in hell right now. Oh, no, you're not. No, you're not. There's another place. Listen, let me tell you this man, as I take my seat, Pastor Taylor. Just as sure as there is a heaven, there's a hell. So if you don't believe in hell, ain't no need believing in heaven. Ain't no need to do this. Because if you don't see me in heaven, then you probably went to the other place. (laughs) In the wrong place. And and that's all, all I can talk about is myself. So if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, right now, as Pastor Tatum comes, you can come while the blood runs warm in your veins. All right now. And all that means is, while you can still hear my voice, all right you still now. have an opportunity. All right. Amen. 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 Thank you for that great word. Amen.